I'm not even sure why my hair is so important to me, but it really is, and it feels like um, I can make a statement with my hair, and so I've always aimed to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, and it feels like it gives me a sense of pride if I'm rocking a really cool um, hairstyle. A, a very particular part about being a black person is our hair, particularly being a black woman. Our, our hair and how we kept our hair it was so important to us because it was ours. It was, a, it was a big thing that we were in control of. No one else was in control of it. One of my early memories was my hair being described as good hair. Um, and, um, and I think, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff related to this description of having good hair. Um, but particularly, my hair was very, very long and it was quite fine, which is quite unusual for black hair. Um, so um, that's what I remember. My mum always being very proud of the fact that she had this daughter with long, good hair. Yeah. Well, I liked to have my hair when I was younger <clears throat> in the kind of turnover roll style, which was like a 1940s style. So, um, growing up, my mum did my hair. Mm. I never ever went to hairdressers. Um, I had no experience of hairdress hairdressing until I was probably about 20. Um, yeah, my mum always did my hair for me. My hair was always ready for school. Um, a particular hairstyle I remember is almost like a it reminds me of my culture. Mm -hmm. So that's my culture. Um, so my parents, my family is from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And um, my mum would part my hair into different sections and she get a piece of threads that you probably use for sewing and use that to just wrap around my hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, essentially the theory behind it is that it stretches your hair so it helps you either get your hair, just make your hair longer. Um, and that would maintain my hair for the whole week. I started doing my own hair at 10 years old, believe it or not. My mum was pregnant with my youngest sister, Sasha, and throughout her pregnancy she was just super sick like she couldn't do anything for me and my other sister Shante so that's when I first started doing my own hair and then I was also doing my younger sister's hair as well and I guess I was single plaiting it something like this but on my own hair um, and then I was doing Shante's hair as well and I just started doing my own hair single plaiting it and cane rowing and um, when I would finish, I'd look in the mirror and be like, oh, this is really nice. But this salon popped up in the centre of Birmingham and the branding was incredible. It just looked like this fantastic place. And at the time, so this was in the 80s, and Jerry Curls had just become cool. And I was um, desperate to get a Jerry Curl. Um, so I asked my mum if I could have a perm, a curly perm, as we called it. <laughs> and... Um, excitedly went into the salon um, and I had at the time um, a picture of Michael Jackson with a curly perm hair um, style and showed it to the hairdresser and said I want my hair like this and the hairdresser was like is your mum okay about this? <laughs> and I used to just copy Jen with the turnover but also I used to also like the two caneras as well since primary school, I've always loved to have it um, in an afro. Um, that's been something that I've always just loved. Um, looking at like celebrities and like people like Diana Ross, and I really just love to have my hair out. At first, I used to straight hair. At first, I used to hot comb mm -hmm. to 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 uh, then I used to put plait, and then when I, I got um, then I used to eat the uh, the the the, the tongs. I mean, I remember my mum used to mix castor oil in with um, Vaseline yeah. for our hair, mm -hmm. and before a whole host of these products came out, that was something that my mum used to do, and I used to love my mum combing my hair and yeah. sitting in between her legs while she did that, and you know, yeah. And I really felt quite sad when she stopped doing her hair because her fingers became quite arthritic mm. and it was quite painful for her. So what my mum would do is she would came around my hair in the night mm -hmm. and um, I wake up and I, um, well actually not necessarily came around, but she'd plait my hair in and um, I'd loosen the plaits in the morning 
and um, I just get an afro comb and fluff it out and she might put some like grease like the night before just to keep it moisturised because I don't want my hair to get dry um, and yeah I wake up I get the afro comb and I just shape it to you know because I suppose it's like a different shape like I think some people think there's like one afro shape but like there's so it depends on your hair texture and the way that you want it to look on the day so Yeah, my, I've just, I've changed my look so many times that oh, I can't even keep up with my own hair. <laughs> but I'm actually, so the look that I've got at the moment, I've had for a couple of years. And as I said, I'm trying to like get some height in the mm -hmm. high top. And, and what happens with hairstyles is they all come back around. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, this is like an original kind of kid and play mm -hmm. uh, 90s fro, fresh mm -hmm. prints. And, um, and I'm just adding a bit of a touch with the uh, bleach effect. So we had, in, in school, we had our hair in two cane rows, or two cane rows and a, a sort of a turn <laughs> at the front. Um, Afro hairstyle, put your hair in a ponytail. It was, it was endless. And then I started and then I, uh, I did the this type of hair. First I used a, I did ribbon, then I did camo. But at first um, uh, they, they had to, to be so mommy because she said, oh no, no, uh, um, this is kind of it, you use ribbon. And then um, my carrots, uh, she's not much, she's grown up, so let, let, it's not on your head, so let her do. <laughs> Move on. A lot of the time, I mean, probably throughout my life, I've had my hair in braids actually, um, because it's it was convenient and I could kind of like put in easy styles and I wouldn't have to worry about it so much when I wake up. I remember uh, trying the hairnet style, which was very popular at the time when I was about thirteen or fourteen, and you'd wear this hairnet put your hair away and you'd have a sort of like twist at the front. Mm -hmm. Very much sort of 1940s hairstyle mm -hmm. actually. Um, but I remember going to the chemist and getting myself a hairnet because it was going to be the school disco. And I remember turning up in my hairnet and everybody was laughing at me. I was like, why are they laughing at me? And they were laughing at me because I got the wrong type of hairnet. But then also you went through phrases because we went through well, the two cane rows, the turnover, the afro, you know, curly perm. curly perm, which again was a big thing in the 80s. Like right now, I really like having my hair in wigs because it's, it's, I think I just like changing my hairstyle up quite a bit, like whatever I'm feeling at the time, I'm like, oh, okay, uh, this week I have it in an afro, next week I have it in a wig, and I really like that. And I think it's just a way of us being able to do whatever we want with our hair mm -hmm. and using our hair as a real form of expression. And so for me, especially as a performer, it's definitely my way of um, standing out. Mm -hmm. And and it's kind of like, like, you know, people know when I'm coming just because they can see my hair. <laughs> so, um, and I couldn't hide in a crowd, but I don't want to hide in a crowd. Um, I soon want to go for the big chop which I've never done before um, but I, I kind of want to chop my hair off and maybe put some colour in it. You know most black people know there's so many different rituals and restrictions about certain things you can and can't do with your hair if you want to keep your hair a particular way. On a day to day basis I will normally wash my hair on the weekends because obviously with work it's much more harder to wash my hair. So I'd wash my hair with a uh, um, shampoo or a cold wash um, and then I would deep condition my hair. So use conditioner, pull it in my hair, so detangle my hair in the shower, put deep conditioner in and then I'd put my hair under a shower cap for probably about 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes while I finish washing up. Then rinse it out. But once I finish, um, I've got high porosity hair, okay. so that means that my hair dries very quickly. Mm -hmm but it absorbs moisture very quickly. Wow. So I don't blow dry my hair, just leave it to air dry by itself because it will do so by the night. So I will just, as soon as I'm out of the shower, it's like a rush to get as much moisture into my hair. Mm. Um, and then I'll just, again, I'll go back to the routine of what my, so I don't actually use the threads. 
but I do twist my hair okay. at night. So it's kind of like almost like my childhood, yeah. essentially. And I twist my hair right night, and then the next day when it's dry, I will just take it out and leave it. So then it's just naturally curly. Cool. And um, I, every night I'll just repeat the cycle of moisturizing my hair if I need to, and then twisting it. Um, and I take it out in the morning. My daily routine consists of a lot of oil and a lot of hair moisturizers and um, a lot of visits to um, hair stores in Dalston mm -hmm. to be able to get all the products I need. So this is one of the main hairstyles that I do and actually so um, it's called box braids and um, single plaits and the hair it's synthetic hair and this hair brand is called Expression. So um, I did my hair on Sunday, today's Wednesday. <laughs> but um, prior to doing my hair on Sunday, I got the extensions and I stretched them to make them soft mm -hmm. and in a state where I can easily pick them up and attach them onto my hair. So um, this hairstyle, it took me eight hours to complete. I know it's a long time. And you have to remember in those days, we didn't have the type of products that are available today. We didn't have as much choice. Yeah. So we had to be really creative and we're still really creative today. Oil sheen as well, just to spray the hair to keep it neat. Mm -hmm. um, I use edge control on the sides just to slick my edges down and um, I use Jamaican castor oil as well in my scalp. Uh, things like shea butter, mm -hmm. coconut oil, all of that kind of stuff um, is in this hair now mm -hmm. and on a daily basis so I probably have to moisturise my hair three times a day um, just to keep it because as you can imagine the bleach has rinsed out all of the condition mm -hmm. but actually if you feel it um, it's really soft. And the other thing we had was the option of our grandmother who used to actually make grease for us. You know, and those days she was using all the oils, the, the, the herbs, you know, everything that they bought out now, that they've got in the shops now. Yeah, she was actually she making make. that herself, <clears throat> you know, and your hair was manageable and, you know, you could do whatever you wanted to do with it. My hair in particular has always felt like quite an investment mm -hmm. because to keep it on point you have to spend so much um, not only time but money on products and going to the barber or hairdresser. I um, used to go to Hibiscus which was in Ridley Road. It's still now Barber's. I worked in Hackney Downs. There was one called Changing Faces. That was a really good one. I was there for years. Um, then we moved to and then I moved to another one called The Source. Now I'm at, now I'm at Gigi's Barbershop. So there's quite, there's been quite a lot of different barbershops in, in and around Hackney. Go to the Greece, Greek people. That's yeah. true, Greek hairdressers. Greek hairdressers. I went to mine when I was about 10, 11, 12. That was in um, Upper Clapton. No, this literally just at the roundabout, just on this side. Uh, I went to Myers, then I went to one called Johnny's. In Johnny's was in um, Fringery Park. A lot of people know about Johnny's. I have to go to the barbers every like two weeks um, and I sometimes switch barber as well because if, if they, if they, you know, if it's not on point with my last cut then I'm moving on. You go to a barber shop and then you'd be like, okay, he's busy, he's busy, he's busy. And then there's one barber that's not busy, you'd be like, yo, why are you not busy? <laughs> I am mean? really, especially now that I've preened this look as it is. So whenever I go into the barbers, I'm always really exact about the type of cut that I'm looking for because mm -hmm. I don't want them to just go in and take off uh, the top of my hair. So in some other barber shops, it's, it's so formal. Well, you know, with Afro Caribbean barber shops, it's a bit more informal. It's a bit just really, oh, relax, man. Call yourself, man. And we talk about things that some people you wouldn't talk about in your regular work environment and in your, you know what I mean? And I think that it's, it's, so it's a real place for real people, do you know what I mean? To kind of like share their real stories and their real pain. I, I've since built up the courage to be able to chop it myself so I don't even go to the barbers anymore. Amazing. So I've saved myself, God knows how much money. <laughs> I 
literally just started practicing on my own here and my sister's here because I've got three sisters as well so I was always the hairdresser in the family I would do my mum's hair my grandma's hair as well like I remember there was a time where my grandma wouldn't let anyone do her hair but me so like sometimes her, her hair would be really messy and my older sister would want to do it and she would be like no Chanel will come and do it just because of the way I did it like I was really soft with her hair so the girls um, that had long extensions I put the hair up in a bun and have it ready and after a while quite a lot of the girls would come and ask me can you put my hair in a bun um, or my teacher partner because she couldn't, she couldn't pack hair so she'd send her kids to me for me to pack their hair in a bun when I was in school I would always be the girl who everyone went to to get their hair came road and you know those memories they're really fun to me um, because every lunchtime I'll spend my time camoing one girl or another's hair and it would just be such a great thing that I, you know, was known for. I've had parents also, um, one particular girl, um, her mum had camoed her hair and she forgot that we were going to swim in, so it was freshly done and she wanted her to be ruined. Um, so her mum bought cling film in her bag and when she saw me I laughed because I knew exactly what her mum wanted me to do yeah. so I had to wrap her hair in cling film just so it'd be somewhat protected it's funny actually because earlier this year <laughs> I saw a girl who I used to go to school with and she greeted me she was like my hairdresser I was like oh that made me feel so special she didn't even say oh hi Chanel she was like oh my hairdresser so it's just nice to know that I don't know, they see me as some sort of um, go-to point for hair. Um, yeah. yeah. It must take up a lot of time though, you're already pretty busy you know what? It takes, I don't, I don't mind doing it because mm -hmm. I, I see teaching as more than just teaching and academics, it's more about being a role model for them. In my early 20s, if I had my hair out, so to speak, then some colleagues wouldn't be approving of the hairstyle because they wanted you to have a more corporate look. So sometimes you just conform, you do it so that you can, you know, you can fit in it as acceptable. I've always felt that I could, you know, have my hairstyles and feel comfortable. And instead of being discriminated against, actually, people like my hairstyles like for instance i went to work this week and um you know my colleagues have never seen me with this hairstyle before mm -hmm. and they were like oh my god your hair looks amazing like my boss came up to me he was like you changed your hair this week and i was like yeah <laughs> so um never felt discriminated against instead you know it's been admired that i see people working in the city with an afro and that's exactly how it should be you know, I've, I've even had people say like, oh, like, I wouldn't like to have hair like you, or I wouldn't like to, you know, like, I just ask lots of questions that make you feel uncomfortable. And I think also like people touching your hair when you never said they could, or it makes you feel uncomfortable. As we are constantly saying, don't touch my hair, <laughs> because um, I have literally had to do the matrix to kind of avoid <laughs> someone like going in for my fro. So that's a really big thing, like we spend a lot of time, um, or at least I know that I spend a lot of time making sure that my hair is on point. And when someone just suddenly goes, can I touch your hair? It's like, no, you can't touch my hair. <laughs> I think the natural hair movement is something that I've always known about because I've always, my mum always kind of taught me to kind of embrace like, you know, the hair I was born with and just love it and care for it because it's part of me, you know, it's what makes me me. And I think the, I think the most important hairstyle, definitely in the 70s, was the afro because it was about um, being black, being beautiful and being proud of your natural hair in its natural state. But I hated relaxed hair. I just thought they looked good to me, didn't suit me, really disliked it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was in sixth form of school, I heard about the natural hair movement. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I decided I wanted to go natural. So I had my last relaxer when I was 18. Okay. And ever since then, I've just been natural. Um, I remember in the um, 90s, um, this new perm had come out. We were getting away from the sort of wet look phase 
and curly perms of the 80s and um, early 90s. And um, I tried this new perm and basically this woman put, because we'd have to have these um, chemicals put in our hair and left left on for a while. Then you sit under these, these huge steaming machines, mm -hmm. which were like great big helmets you sit under for ages. Anyway, so I had this perm and um, I kept saying to the woman, it's burning, it's burning. She said, no, it's okay. It's, you know, it's, just leave it on for a little while. I said, no, it's burning, it's burning. So anyway, she eventually did come and took it out. And as she was taking the rollers out, clumps of my hair was coming out. So I, you know, she had to cut me things. I said, listen, rinse my hair and let me go. Yeah. And then I went to my sister, who also used to do hair for people. She used to braid people's hair. She said, the only thing you can do is to cut it all off and start again. And I cried and cried and cried. And then I had to cut it all off. And then I had no hair on my head. And I knew I was going away on holiday. And I thought, actually, having no head, hair on my head is actually probably not a bad thing for this holiday. Because it meant I didn't have to take hundreds and hundreds of products with me. It meant that I could go and swim and be in and out of water as much as I want without worrying about what I was going to do with my hair afterwards. So I thought I'd keep it and when I come back from my holiday, grow it back. But I never did. It damaged my hair. So I said, no, no. No, it's no more coming because it's done. So I, I did it natural. I, I, I leave, leave nat, uh, natural, natural hair. I think it was just the idea to see that natural hair, my natural form, was beautiful. Yeah. I think mean, so often it was seen or believed that your hair was straight. Um, it meant that your hair was longer, your hair was more beautiful, mm -hmm. and it was much more easier to manage. Yeah. Um, but now being natural, I realize. My natural hair is beautiful, my natural hair is long, and my natural hair is easy to maintain. There's a, a misunderstanding of um, if um, you know a black woman or a black girl doesn't have her hair naturally, then she doesn't love her natural hair. And that's not the case. A lot of the time it's because the hairstyle she has it in is easier, it's convenient, or she just wants it that way. So I think there's a misconception with that. Um, but I love my hair either way.